James 1.18 says, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. James 1.18 By God's own will he desired to bring us about into this life as human beings who are made in the image of God. And each and every person is uniquely created and made in the image of God. No one person is the same. We know this from appearance, from personality, from talents and gifts, and from a DNA level. There is nothing on this earth that is entirely duplicated when it comes to people. Because God is a God of creativity. He doesn't want to simply make the same everything. I mean, obviously, there are many palm trees, for example, or there um, are many different blades of grass. But even then, each one is uniquely made and uniquely placed and uniquely grows in a certain area. Nothing is exactly the same when it comes to God and His creating of us as being made in His image. And so, God theoretically could go allow things to progress on and on forever and ever and keep uh, allowing new humans to be created because God is infinite. And if we look at the, and if we desire to see the vision of God, we know that we can't because Jesus Christ himself said, no one has seen the Father but the Son. And so God is infinite in all, and God collectively, we know Jesus Christ is the revealed image bearer of God, but God collectively is invisible. He's incorporeal. He's not made up of matter or material. He is outside all that is. So God could forever continue to make humans and they would continue to be in God's image because God's image is infinite. It's not bound by anything. It's limitless. And it is what we can uh, meditate on as the beatific vision of God, so to speak. Uh, just knowing that God is so infinite and beyond all. There's such beauty in God that we n never will enter fully into that um, beatific vision. I'm using it different from what Catholics would use, but we can never enter fully in to that because, again, God is infinite. We're finite. We will become immortal once we pass on into the next life, but nonetheless, there will forever be a need to grow and to know God. And so, when God has brought uh, humans out, obviously each and every person is different. He's brought us out by the word of truth. And we know that the word of truth is that which corresponds to reality. We know the word of truth is what God speaks into existence. God does not speak uh, falsity into existence. He, we know that there is no darkness in him. He is the father of lights. He is the light of light and the life of life. He is the light of the world and light is revealed truth. And so God is not one who tempts others. He's not one who deceives others. What God makes is in fact is because God has declared it and orchestrated it and understood it based upon his wisdom and his omniscience. He knows exactly what needs to be done at a given time based upon who he is, who he is, what he sees, and what he declares. So we were all brought out by the word of truth. Yes, it took it takes two to tango with our parents, but obviously um, there are many people who try to have children and they're not able to have that blessing. So children are a miracle. And it is God alone who allows the mother to become pregnant. And he sends the light of life within. So at the moment of conception, there's even scientific proof. You can look on YouTube. Uh, there's a light that happens. And then that's when God breathes and, and, and by the word of truth speaks the soul of our existence into existence. Now, obviously, we're not fully developed. We don't have the limbs and uh, and the hands and the feet and the eyes and, and all that f at that moment. But nonetheless, we are not just material beings with bodies. We also have souls. And we need to understand that at the moment that happens, that is a person in there. It's not a cluster of cells. It's a person. And so <clears throat> we know that everything and us are the first fruits of God's creatures. We are those who are closest to him. There is no other being that is made in the image of God. 
Dogs are great. They're very loving and wonderful, but they're not made in the image of God. Angelic beings, angels, they are just pure in who they are. They are wonderful beings. They, they don't sin for the ones that stayed in heaven and were created by God and didn't, aren't the fallen angels that went with Lucifer. They are perfect. They praise God continually. But no matter how good they are and how wonderful they are, they are not made in the image of God. We each have that unique identity of being made in the image of God. And we need to understand that and understand we are a kind of first fruits that have been brought into this world by the word of truth. And God has a purpose and plan for each and every person here. He loves each and every person that he makes. He never creates something that he doesn't love. He never creates something that he does not care about. God cares just as, mu uh, as much about a grain of sand as he does the universe. And even greater still, he cares more about us who are made in his image than the universe, than the universe collectively. And that's an astounding fact. It can be tough to get our mind around that and wrap our head around because who are we that that God would you know look upon us what is man that God you are mindful of us and the reality is we have nothing to offer God but nonetheless God made us not because he needed us but because he desired for us to be able to experience him his goodness his love his beauty and God is a wonderful, wonderful God. And may we pray and, and desire that all would come to know God uh, through true belief that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and repentance of their sins.